Hey guys, welcome to the YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about the art of YouTube. Because if you've clicked this video, I'm sure I did some creative thumbnail pointing like... And it would have said something like, watch this video, or you must click this video. And it just shows... YouTube is kind of a weird anomaly in terms of... It's one of the most profitable streaming services, and it doesn't even label itself as a streaming service. You look at all the metrics on paper, and it says, hey, this is our competing Netflix, it's our competing Disney+, Plus, it's our competing Amazon. Like, there is so many th aspects of YouTube, the platform, beating tr traditional media. And why is that? Well, one, you're watching my video. User-generated videos are kind of where the future is, and while social media is off in the corner doing their own little things, like TikTok is making stars, Instagram's making stars. YouTube's making stars. I'm one of them. <laughs> but, you know, there are so many stars getting made right now. And people don't want to see the same stale five or six stars over and over again from Hollywood. People are just sick of the Hollywood system. So you're seeing all this emergence in terms of YouTube of, hey, Smosh is back, for example. Or people getting nostalgic for like a PewDiePie or something. You know, there are so many aspects of YouTube that make it the best streaming service. And when I think about YouTube, when I think about my upcoming in YouTube, there are videos that don't do too good, I will admit. There are topics that I cover, but I also, I, when I'm making the video, like, I've been doing reactions to Dragon Ball Daima, and I know those videos are usually going to get about 100 views. I know my typical audience doesn't like those videos, doesn't view those videos. I get that they don't that a lot of people that subscribe to me want to hear me rant about how physical media is great and how gaming has been ruined by the template of not preserving stuff. While I do feel that way, I can't just do every video that way. I mean, I could. I mean, I could do every video that way, but it will become stale very quickly. So why, while it doesn't do too well, I'm still going to make those videos and people say, you should just stick to the physical media stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but I mean, I run the channel, not you. And I mean, I want to make content that I want to make. And it just so happens that so many of my followers and so many subscribers want to see the content I put out there. And it's so awesome to that so many people watch all my videos. But, you know, I look at the engagement on those videos. I mean, even for the Dragon Ball Daima reviews, I usually average about six, seven or eight comments on those things. And people are engaging with it. That's what I look at. The views are one thing, like, I mean, don't get me wrong, if nobody's viewing the video, it would be a bit of a problem. I'll be like, okay, two people viewed this video, I might have done something wrong. But if it's got a hundred views and people are putting time in to watch that video, I'm going to make another one, you know? <laughs> so it's just this whole thing of, like, YouTube is an anomaly, and we're all still trying to figure it out. And when I see something that only hits a hundred views, like my Dragon Ball Dima reviews, I'm not looking at it as like, oh, okay, uh, that only got a hundred where the rest of my videos that I talk about physical media get a thousand. No, I'm looking at it as like, wow, this is a market that I haven't tapped yet. Like there's people there who watch like uh, Geekdom 101 and there's a market there that aren't watching my videos. So how do I, how do I talk to my fans over there? Because obviously you see a lot of Dragon Ball around here. I am a massive Dragon Ball fan and obviously I want to have some sort of foothold in the Dragon Ball fandom, you know? So I look at it as like, okay, well, I have to do the content. I have to keep pushing. When I started with YouTube, my first videos were only like, I don't know, 200, 300 views, and they weren't anything special, but it was the start of the channel. And obviously when you're creating something, you need to keep doing it every day. You need to keep going at it. When I started the channel, I started it in February. Now I obviously had the channel since like, I don't know, 2022. And it's also, I've been on YouTube since the very beginning. I had a YouTube channel back in 20... 2006, 2007, and it went through to 2008, 2009. That's when I really took off on YouTube. But at its peak, I only hit 1,000 something subscribers. And those old videos were like kind of trolly in nature. So I was like doing kind of troll videos. <laughs> but, you know, the whole thing of like, I have had success on YouTube before and I have felt what YouTube can be. Now, obviously, back then I wasn't ready for it. Now I'm a lot more calm in mind. I'm a lot more outspoken. I'm a lot more comfortable on being on screen. So when I look at myself now and look at how I've grown over time, yeah, I did I did every day during March for a reason, to get me more comfortable on being on YouTube. Now, obviously, that burnt me up very quickly because I wasn't ready for that either. I was ready like, I was like, okay, I need to get better on YouTube, but I was not prepared for the toll that would take because I was trying to force it. And when you try to force YouTube, it's always like, 
it's always going to end wrong and it's always going to make you burn out. Now, obviously I burnt out very early on and that's when I took that month off in like, I don't know, April or May. And, you know, obviously taking a month off is disastrous for a channel. And then I rebranded. It was like, oh, well, nobody's watching my thing after I turn. So I'll rebrand it and I'll do the physical way. And that was a mistake as well, because nobody wants to watch a brand. They will hear f for my voice. They didn't want to hear the physical way. They wanted to hear Jamie. And you've seen like Jeff do the same thing with films at home. He's kind of moved away from films at home. He's now just Jeff. And people have gravitated towards that. Some people say, I miss films at home. And I'm, I still call him films at home. But, you know, I also say Jeff, you know, he's rebranded that channel because he figured it out as well that people were there to listen to him, not for the brand. <laughs> And we're all kind of figuring it out as well. We're all kind of in this together trying to figure it out. But when I talk about the art of YouTube, it's just brilliant that someone like me can compete with Netflix, you know? And yes, while I do, I do knock streaming quite a lot on this channel, I do admit, like, I'm doing something that, you know what, if Netflix ever reached out to me and said, hey, Jamie, it turns out we actually do want to do physical media. It turns out we do want to get into that industry. What would you recommend? What would, obviously you've done Stranger Bit. We've put Stranger Things and Orange is the New Black out before and House of Cards, but we don't know what physical media collectors want. I would be one of the people they would probably reach out to and say, hey, I could say, hey, well, yeah, first thing, special features. Make the discs the best, highest quality, make them 4K, make them 100 gigs so you have the highest bit rate and then put special features on them so we have the best experience and have it as like a collector's thing. Like Orange is, uh, not Orange is the new back, Stranger Things up here. Season one and season two were great when they put those out. I was like, yes, this is the way to go. Have a collector's experience, have it like a VHS tape. And VHS tapes are coming back too. But you know, this is the thing, like I am a big fan of YouTube because, and it's one of the only streaming services I pay for and keep on because for me, it's something that I get value from and it's not so much like oh, I'm just going to sit there and watch trashy TV or watch Tiger King or whatever I get value from watching YouTube I get value from watching films at home I get value from watching Serial at Midnight I get value from watching I mean even stuff like you know like PewDiePie for example I'll watch occasionally PewDiePie I'll watch John Campia you know I'll watch all these YouTubers and figure out why it works. And there are so many ways why it works. And I'm always analyzing why it works. And I mean, Nick 4K has reacted to some of my videos. And while his audience is, I think he's got 60,000 subscribers. I'm always like, yeah, I mean, he's viewed my video. That's pretty cool. Like, and yes, his views aren't what they once were, but they are still him and it is still him reacting. And it's so awesome that a YouTuber like that is reacting to me and taking time to react to me. Well, I'm also reacting to him. Mr. Whippy's outside. This Mr. Whippy goes past every day when I'm trying to film. <laughs> Let's listen to him. Anyone want ice cream? Do you feel like ice cream, guys? Because Mr. Whippy's outside. What if I just keep going over Mr. Whippy? We'll just keep talking. And it'd be cool if I had an ice cream, being chilling. <laughs> Who remembers the John Cena video where he had the ice cream and bing chilling? <laughs> I'm sure someone's going to cut that up and snip it up for TikTok or something and make it a meme. Bing chilling. Something, something bing chilling. <laughs> John Cena's mad though. But <laughs> yeah, to continue on, the art of YouTube, like, look at this. Like, you would not get this in a Netflix show in a, con a studio controlled environment. Mr. Whippy's going past my window and I'm not going to edit it out. That's that's the thing that makes YouTube gold. You can have anything happen at any given time and people love it. And now he really is right outside my window. And he's turned it off, so I guess someone's ordering ice cream. <laughs> Good choice, guys. Get the hundreds and thousands on it. You know the hundreds and thousands? Do, do Americans have hundreds and thousands? They're like, I think you call them sprinkles, but they're like little round balls of sprinkles. Like it's, you know, hundreds and thousands are like freckles almost, you know. I don't know how to explain it for an American audience, but... Yeah, Mr. Whippy's awesome. But when I think about it, I love the art of YouTube. I love what I'm doing. And yes, view, not every video can be a thousand views. I mean, I have friends who do boxing channels and so on, and they get hundreds of thousands, even millions of views. And I'm just like, yeah, but I'm comfortable doing what I'm doing. I'm, I'm obviously making fans who obviously watch my videos. And yeah, while, while I'm posting every day currently and trying to do every day, I know people are not going to view every video. I know people aren't going to watch everything. So when I have a good video where I feel like, okay, this one's a bit better, 
I'll usually leave a bit of a gap between them, like a one day or two day gap before I post the next one. And the next one will probably be a low quality one, like, oh, I talked about Kenny versus Benny. Because I try to give people incentive to be like, okay, the last big video was that one. But if you want something to keep the other people interested, there's a video that I just want to talk about, like Kenny versus Benny. I love that show and I wanted to do that video. But yeah, it's an art form and you see like us trying to figure out thumbnails, like watch this video, like, hmm. You see Jeff doing the recommendations at the moment, doing here's the top five movies and you know, he's figuring that out and that works well on social media and it's also working well on YouTube too. But you see all the different people around YouTube doing this and trying to and trying to just make it uh, like a an experience for people to watch and you know trying to figure out what works what doesn't and while i am trying to talk over these people outside my window cuz they're just yelling for ice cream you know you, anything can happen and it's not polished and that's what makes it brilliant it's an art form and i get not everyone gets the art form but i'm just so happy to be on youtube I'm so happy that I found an audience on YouTube and I'm so glad that I'm doing it. And yes, I don't care if my channel tops out at 35, 34, 3500, whatever. I don't care if that's all it ever gets to. The fact that 3,500 people subscribe to my channel is awesome. Like that is stuff that I'm just like, I never would have thought, I, I said going into this channel when I first started it. If I get to like a thousand views, a thousand subscribers, not even that, 500 to a thousand. If I get in that ballpark, I can at least say it was a success and I made it there. Or if I even surpassed my original channel, which I think I've topped out at 1,030 back in the day when I was doing it in 2009, 2010. But those were different videos. Obviously I talk now instead of doing troll videos, like editing stuff together as like a cartoon. You know, obviously back then I was different. I was a kid and I was trying to figure out what worked. And obviously back then troll troll culture back then was big on YouTube and so we were all trying to figure it out why Smush was doing the Pokemon stuff like here's a stick on this I was doing like Triple H invades TNA and I'm sure someone videos out there on YouTube I'm sure someone's copy and pasted it but <laughs> you know I'm, I was trying to figure out as a kid like okay what works on YouTube oh people are going to view this video but then also when you're in that niche community, it's also like, okay, well, I don't seem this getting any bigger than it is. And also it was really depressing me because I was like, okay, is this all I am? And that's the thing. I, I knew I had to change. And also that's the thing. Even when I do these videos, I do these longer form videos like the art of YouTube. I know I'm still going to do Dimer and if I review Dimer episodes because I know that's a passion of mine. I love Dragon Ball and I just want to talk about it. I don't care if it gets views. And that's the way for new YouTubers to think about it. Not everything's going to get views. Not everything you think is going to work is going to work. It'll be the most unsuspecting video that blows up and gets views. And while you can prepare for it, there's no pre preparation really for like a viral video. Like one of my most viral ones was uh, you, you don't need 4K Blu-ray. Now obviously people say I'm a big 4K collector, but my argument in that video was, well, if you don't want to get the more expensive format, there is nothing wrong with DVD and Blu-ray and there's nothing wrong with VHS. Like there are other formats and they are a lot cheaper and there's really nothing wrong with them. But that's the thing, like that video took off because people were like, yeah, I don't really want 4K. I don't need that big format. Blu-ray looks great to me. But obviously I make the 4K videos because I am a 4K collector as well. I am a fan of 4K. And that's the thing. There are different portions of my audience that like different videos. I'll do a Blu-ray, top 10 Blu-rays, and it won't do as good as top 10 4K Blu-rays. And I'll do like my top 10 Westerns, but it won't do as good as the top 10 Bond movies. You know, there's so many different, there's so many different people who subscribe to my channel that watch everything that just kind of like, they might be here for just the gaming stuff. Me talking about, oh, remasters, you know, we need to keep it as possible, the best as possibly can. Like this is the original version. And while I am a big fan of that, there are people who want to hear me talk about, okay, but when I do want to play like the new games, I want the best quality. Like if I was getting GTA six, I would want the PS five version or whatever, you know, but yeah, this is just a bit of a rant because I don't know. I just want to have some fun today. And yeah, YouTube is an art form. We are competing with streaming traditional media. And the fact that so many people watch us is just amazing. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Um, jump down in those comments. Um, like, subscribe, drop a comment, and I don't know, watch a million other videos. Give me some monetization money. Oh, before we go, before we go. Monetization. Now, I know everyone talks about monetization. The big bad beast, it ruins channels. I know. 
But see, this is the thing. I am a fan of monetization. I have at times turned it off when I got to the point where I was like, is it ruining my channel? And then I was like, okay, but I'm still getting the same numbers for monetization. Like I'm still getting the same views. It's like people don't care if it's monetized or not. Cause most people just have YouTube ad blocker or something on, or like YouTube red or not YouTube red, what's it called? YouTube premium. You know, so many people have stuff that doesn't watch the ads. So they don't really care if it's monetized or not. They just want to hear the content. And that's the thing, like when you do good content and you're talking about stuff that resonates with an audience, it doesn't have to be well produced. It doesn't have to be well edited. You don't need to have 14 different cuts and use all Getty images to get all these images in there that you pay thousands of dollars to put together. Now it does enhance the quality of the video, but as I said, people are there to listen to you. Anyways, guys, that's where I'm going to leave it. I am grateful for every subscriber I get. And yeah, let me know in the comments. Um, I'm sure there'll be a video on the screen here to watch somewhere. I'll put it somewhere. And yeah, um, let me know what you think. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.